Hey everyone, it's Dan Bader, and I'm super glad to have you here join me with another uh, Python video. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about list comprehensions. List comprehensions are actually one of my favorite features in Python. I know they can seem a little bit arcane at first or a little bit strange, but they are actually super helpful. They can help make your programs easier to read and easier to maintain once you've actually wrapped your head around how they work. And when you break them down to sort of first principles, um, they are relatively easy to understand. So behind the scenes, it's, it's pretty much all just for loops. And um, that's what I'm gonna teach you in this tutorial. So I'm gonna show you exactly how you can take an existing for loop in Python and then transform it into a list comprehension and also do the same thing the other way around. All right, so let's jump right in. So here's a simple list comprehension that I just defined. And you can see here, it looks kind of similar to finding a list constant, right? Where you would just put in um, values between these um, square brackets. So I defined this list comprehension here and then uh, assigned the result of it to the squares variable. And the reason I did that is so you can see uh, what the output of that list comprehension is. And I also wanted to give it a name because it's, well, it's computing all the integer square numbers from zero to nine. And of course, I could have just uh, taken the same list comprehension and run that immediately, right? Now, when you look at this list comprehension, the syntax is fairly human readable, I want to say. And really what this syntax is, it's kind of a shorthand for a regular for loop. So I'm going to clear my screen here and I'm going to bring back the list comprehension. And now I'm going to write a for loop that runs the exact same calculation. So we're going to start out with an empty squares list and we're going to populate that list as we go along. And then to start the for loop, I'm gonna take this part here from the list comprehension. So I'm just copying and pasting it over. And now what I need to do is I need to update square. So I need to append something to it. And for that, I'm gonna take this part of the calculation here. Right, so you can see where I, where I copied these parts from, right? The squares one is that one. And then the for loop is uh, that one here, that part here in the list comprehension. And then the actual ca calculation that I'm running here or the expression that I'm evaluating that I took that from here to calculate the squares. All right, so when I take a look at how this squares list was populated by the for loop solution, you can see it's exactly the same. So when I rerun the original list comprehension, you can see it has the exact same output. So that's how you transform a very simple list comprehension into a for loop. Now, if you try and generalize this structure, so the transformation that we just applied, if you try and generalize that for any other kind of uh, list comprehension, you might end up with a pattern somewhat like this. So what I've done here is um, I've taken the list comprehension up here that I used in the example, and I've replaced parts of it, kind of the parts that you would swap out that are not part of the there's the skeleton for a list comprehension. And I replaced them with these um, markers here, right? So in this case, the values, which is our output values, would correspond to what was called squares in the example. And then the expression would be the uh, x times x operation that we're doing here. And then, uh, of course, like this four part would be exactly the same. And then we're taking a value, in this case, it would be called x from a collection. In this case, it would be the range of integers from uh, zero to nine. And um, this is sort of the, the template behind this list comprehension. And as you've seen, we can take this template and transform it into another template. So this list comprehension, if you wanted to transform it into a for loop, it would look like this. So this is pretty much exactly what we've done in the example, right? So again, our values here, that's just squares and we're creating an empty list and then we're iterating over each value in the collection and you can see how these correspond here. And then we're updating the output values that we previously initialized, right? We're just appending stuff to that list and we're not just taking the value from the collection and adding it, but we're running so we're evaluating some kind of uh, expression based on that value to calculate the actual output value. So this is how this transformation goes down. And the cool part is that it works in both directions, right? So you could apply the same transformation to actually take a for loop 
and turn it into a list comprehension again. And, and that's kind of the powerful thing about these list comprehensions, because once you're getting tired of writing loops that look exactly like this, well, now you have a tool in your toolbox that you can apply to make these parts in your program a little bit more readable and uh, basically turn these three lines into a one-liner that does exactly the same thing, which can be pretty powerful, can be great for improving readability. It can also be horrible for improving readability, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit at the end. All right, so we just looked at this fairly simple pattern here. And what I wanna talk about now is how you can expand this pattern to actually include filtering. And filtering is gonna make the list comprehensions that you can write a lot more powerful and a lot more flexible. So let's take a look at that. So I've updated my example here by adding filtering. And you can see here that this looks very similar to the previous example. All of the parts that you're already familiar with are still there. So we've got our output list of values. We've got the expression we calculate and we've got this four value in collection part that we run. And so this new stuff here at the end, that's where the filtering happens. So in this case, we're calculating the same set of values, but we're only keeping the values where this condition here is true. And in case you haven't seen the modulo operator before, it uh, divides two numbers and then gives you the remainder. So if I go um, 31 modulo two, the remainder of that is one because it's uh, an odd number, right? We can't cleanly divide it by two. So the remainder, remainder of that is one. And if I go 30 modulo two, then the remainder is zero. And I'm taking advantage of that here in this filtering expression to only include values in this even squares list um, that are actually even. So this is a great way to find out if a number is even or odd, right? You can just use the modulo operator for that. All right, so let's take a look at the output here that we've generated. And as you can see, this filtered down the previous list of squares so that it only includes the even squares. So remember, this is what we had previously before the filtering, and that also included odd numbers. And now those are all gone because we filtered them out with this uh, if part in the list comprehension. Now let's take a look at how that affects our template behind the scenes or our, uh, how can we transform this into a standard for loop template behind the scenes. So if you wanted to generate the same list with a for loop, you would probably do something like this. Again, you would start out by creating an empty output list, and then we would iterate over this range again. And now what we need to add is the filtering. So in this case, I would just add the filtering condition here inside the for loop. And then if the filter condition is true, only then am I going to append the calculated value to my output list. This is exactly what I've done here. So hopefully we'll get the same result. Yep, that looks pretty good. So you can see here how I took the initial list comprehension with filtering and transformed it into an equivalent for loop. All right, so I've got the updated template here, and pretty much all that I've added is this uh, if condition part. And we can take a look at how this would transform uh, to a for loop, all right? And this is how it would transform into a for loop. So again, this is really similar to the previous template, but now we've added this if condition line that applies the filtering. So you can see, you know, if you build these, uh, if you build your understanding of list comprehension step-by-step, step, then I think it becomes much easier to actually see what's going on because the, the jump from, you know, from the previous list comprehension and then adding this if condition here is, is relatively small, right? It's relatively easy to wrap your head around that. But if you had seen that for the first time, if you had seen a more complex list comprehension, you know, like this one, it would seem, uh, it would seem a little bit overwhelming, to be honest, because it's, it just helps to break things down into these little steps. And hopefully that example showed you how these list comprehensions break down into these relatively simple for loops. Now there's a lot more to say about these uh, list comprehensions or comprehensions in general, because there are also dictionary and set comprehensions. And I'm gonna put a link into the description of this video where you can learn about this stuff if you want to. But before you run off and jump into refactoring your programs to add list comprehensions to them, 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, two things. So number one is formatting. How should you format your list comprehensions so they look nice and clean? Because one downside here is that they can get uh, super long and can kind of go past the, the line length limit that you might have set for yourself. Or if you're using Pepe, you know, it's really easy to go over that limit. So I want to talk a little bit about that, how I like to format my list comprehensions. And then also I want to give a bit of a caveat here where list comprehensions seem like a really great tool and they are, but there's also a danger of overusing them. So I want to give, you know, just my opinion on that and when it makes sense to use or not use a list comprehension. All right. So in terms of formatting, what I like to do is if I have a slightly more complex list comprehension uh, and it doesn't fit into one line, often what I'll do is I'll align my comprehension that way so that I've got the expression on the first line and then I'll put the for part below that and I'll put the filter part on another line. And I feel like that reads pretty well and looks pretty clean. And it's a good way to format your list comprehensions if they run the danger of spilling across the line boundary, right? So that's that's a way you could do this. And so to show you an example of what this would look like with the uh, even squares example that we had previously, I might do something like this, or actually in this case, because I have enough space, it would probably do something like this and actually leave the filtering down there or even put it on a single line, right? Because it's um, like, that's, that's only 56 or 55 characters here. So this is not going to hurt too much, but I, I hope this gives you an idea of what you can do if you have, you know, for example, if you have a longer function call here, then it might make sense to uh, format this differently and actually move this down or do something like this. Like basically what I wanted to say here is that I like using these uh, parts here in the template as my breakpoints um, if I need them. And that can help you break it down if you're getting close to the line boundary. All right, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is that you wanna be careful with how often and what under what circumstances you use these list comprehensions. So one downside of list comprehensions is that, well, they are more terse than for loops. They can feel or they can get a little bit overwhelming if someone is not familiar with them. So with this feature, I think it makes sense to balance it with, um, for example, who you're working with. If you want to introduce Python to a new team, uh, maybe kind of blasting them with a bunch of list comprehensions isn't the greatest way to do that because a for loop is probably going to seem more familiar to them than uh, hitting them with a, a list comprehension right away. So depending on the developer audience you're working with, these list comprehensions might be a good feature to use or they might not be. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is that these list comprehensions can also be nested. So you can have list comprehensions inside list comprehensions. And this is something that I would encourage you to stay away from that. Um, it's much better to turn that into a loop or actually even move part of it into a separate function call because it's gonna be a lot easier to read and a lot easier to maintain. So you can write some pretty gnarly list comprehensions and usually, you know, it's tempting, I know it's tempting, but usually it's not a great idea to do that because it gets super confusing really quickly and it gets extremely hard to maintain. And so it makes sense to really, you know, spend some time to think about it where it's better to use a list comprehension in a specific use case or not. So that was a word of warning here at the end, but I think it's definitely something you want to keep in mind. Like all code is communication and you always want to make sure you're communicating your intent clearly and that you're not writing code just for the sake of making it extremely terse or concise or overly concise, right? Because um, I know it's fun, you know, and I've done it in the past and I've done it to other people and um, really it just kind of sucks. So <laughs> I would recommend that you don't do that. I mean, definitely use list comprehensions. They are awesome. I think for something like that, in, in my mind, that's much cleaner than using the equivalent for loop, but uh, be careful with deep nesting and, and some of the crazier list comprehensions you might want to write. All right, well, I hope this tutorial helped you out. If you enjoyed learning stuff like that, then uh, check out the article in the description that has a little bit more background info on list comprehensions and other types of comprehensions like dictionary and set comprehensions in Python. So you can learn about that. And also check out my book called Python Tricks, the book, a buffet of awesome Python features that has many, many more tutorials and introductions to topics like the one you just saw. And I think you're gonna get a lot out of it if you enjoyed this tutorial. All right, so happy Pythoning and talk to you soon.